Welcome back, everybody. A um, uh, little announcement. I don't know if you've uh, been paying attention to our calendar lately, but next week, a week from today, is our first test. It's going to be great. So I will, uh, I will say a bit more next week about you know what what you should expect from the test, but uh, just letting you know for now. I think you should expect problems that are you know vaguely similar to the homework problems, although perhaps a bit easier. Some of the homework problems I think have been a little a little difficult uh, because you know you have you have a lot of time to work on them and you are free to work with each other on them. So. Um, not uh, although I, I hope you think some of the homework problems were not so difficult so you know the test will be like the um, easier ones of the homework problems that's what I could say vaguely but we can talk more about it next time Is there a proofs? not a lot of proofs you should expect to prove some things but not uh, not a lot of things is that what you wanted me to say yes, yes. Yeah, right. Any other vague questions about the test? All right, great. That's a little something to look forward to. Um, I thought maybe, you know, last time we were talking about open sets. I hope you remember what an open set is. Um, set, uh, let's say A is open when, it means every point has an epsilon neighborhood around it, which is contained in the set A. So one way to write that is you can say something like for all X in A, there exists one of these neighborhoods. Really, I'm saying there exists some epsilon greater than zero, such that the epsilon neighborhood of X is a subset of A, right? That's what it means to be an open set. Every, the idea is every point is like an inside point. None of the points are on the boundary. Can you see the screen all right? It's like a glare for me, but not for you. Okay. Um, uh, I thought just as a little warm up, let's do, this is another problem from the 2020 comprehensive exam. This is number 23B. Number 23A says, write the definition of an open set, which is what I just wrote. 23B, this in my opinion is an easy one. It says, prove that A equals the set of X in the real numbers, such that X is greater than one. Prove that this is open, all right? This, of course, otherwise known as the interval from one to infinity, right? That's what that is. Um, so just looking at that, you would say, well, yeah, it's an open interval, so it's open. Uh, I assume they don't want you to just say that. You should actually use the definition of an open set to demonstrate that that set is open. All right, how, uh, how would I do this? Well, the definition of open says that something is true for every point X and A. So we should begin by saying, oh, all right, proof here. Let X be some point in A, and then we have to find the epsilon such that the neighborhood around X is a subset of A, right? So I'll say we'll find, really that's the whole proof. We'll find some epsilon such that V epsilon of X is a subset of A, right? How are you gonna choose that number epsilon? Epsilon is like the radius of this neighborhood and it has to be small enough so that the entire neighborhood fits inside the set A. Um, you might sort of draw yourself a little picture here. This set looks like uh, the open interval from one to infinity. So if this is one here, it's just this whole this whole thing, right? That's my set A. And let's say X is some point, make X red right there. Anyone wanna suggest how can we choose the epsilon? You need to choose the epsilon, it has to be small enough so that the neighborhood around X is completely inside the set A. Can you decide a value for epsilon which will make it small enough? You're not allowed to have, you don't want the neighborhood to like hang over the outside of, of A. What do you think? Should 
choose epsilon equal I'm trying to choose some epsilon, which will be like, the, the idea of open means you have to find some small neighborhood like this, right? The epsilon of x. Epsilon would be the radius of this neighborhood. Can you choose that epsilon small enough to guarantee that this, this little blue thing that I drew does not hang over the edge of A? It has to stay as a subset of A. There are many choices. Zero? Two. I'm not sure two is good enough because if, like, like, we don't know exactly what x is, right? Like, what if x was equal to, um, you know, 1.5? In that case, two would make it go past the ends, right? If you actually use two for the, uh, for the um, radius of that neighborhood, that's too much. So your answer is probably going to be in terms of x somehow. Like if x is already a million, then you don't have to work too hard to find this neighborhood. Uh, x could be close to one. What do you think? Yeah? One over x? One over x? When you end up I'm not sure that's good enough. If x was like 1.1, uh, 1. 1, then one over x would be too big, I think. So it'd be like, yeah, what do you think? X minus one, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You just, you want, I mean, uh, you want it to be this much, right? This neighborhood that I want to draw. I don't care how far it goes to the right, but uh, as far as to the left, you don't want it to stretch past the one going out to the left. So this radius here should be X minus one, all right? And that's positive because uh, X being a uh, part of the set A, means that x has got to be bigger than 1. So yeah, that's what I'm going to choose the epsilon to be. Choose epsilon to be x minus 1. And then you can just tell on the picture, then the epsilon of x is a subset of a. Because I, I chose that epsilon so that it wouldn't uh, stretch past the, uh, the edge of a. If you want to be really sure, you could say x, x minus 1 over 2, then it would be even smaller. It would definitely be uh, inside the A. All right. That's all there is to it. Um, look at the picture and choose that, choose that distance appropriately. Any questions about that? All right. I got this new mask. I hope it looks good. It's like overpowered. It gets hard to, uh, when I breathe, you can see it. It means it's working, I guess, but it's hard to breathe. I was hoping when I, you know, like this summer when I, when I learned that like everybody in class would have masks on, I was hope, hoping to come back to school and see lots of people with like crazy masks. I haven't seen a lot of, I wanted like dog mouths or something, you know, but no offense. I haven't seen a lot of interesting masks. All right, I got a new one, but it's not interesting at all. Um, that's all I want to say about open sets. I was just a little refresher memory about what open sets are. And uh, let's talk today, I said, our big topic for today is closed. I wrote cloded, closed sets. Closed sets. All right, remember closed is not the opposite of open. They're just two different things. And there is a relationship uh, between opens and closed, but they're not, um, they're not opposites. So um, the idea is open means it contains no boundary points. In other words, in an open set, every point is an inside point. And so there are no points on the edge of an open set, all right? Closed means not the opposite, but it's like the other, the other extreme. So closed means it contains all of its boundary points. All 
All right. So a set is open means that um, all the boundary points are excluded. A set is closed means all the boundary points are included. These are not opposites. They're more like two ends of a spectrum. Of course, uh, it's possible to be in between, to have some but not all the boundary points included, in which case it's not open or closed. All right. But closed means it contains, maybe I'll put quotes around these to make it a little more grammatical. This is not the definition, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what closed means. This is not, this doesn't count as a definition because I never said exactly what I mean by boundary points. But here, here's a definition. We're actually gonna talk a little bit about this kind of boundary point. We're not gonna call them boundary points technically. Um, these points that we're talking about are called limit points. So it says a point X is called a limit point of some set A when Uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, v epsilon of x intersect a contains a point other than x. All right, this is the definition of a limit point. And it's kind of a complicated thing, so we're going to spend some time trying to get a good feel for uh, what this looks like. Within 10 minutes or so, hopefully we'll have all a very simple intuition about this. It's not a hard uh, idea once you get it into your, into your mind. A limit point means every neighborhood around that point has to intersect the set in some point other than that point itself. That's a little technicality. Uh, for example, let's just talk about lots of examples here. How about if A is the open interval zero to one? So on a picture, it looks like this, right? How about the number one? Is one a limit point? Limit point means for all epsilon greater than zero, this is the definition of limit point. Every neighborhood around that point contains some point uh, so every neighborhood intersection with A contains a point other than X. So you should ask yourself, I'm talking about the point one right now. Is it true that every neighborhood around that point one, when I intersect it with A, it includes some point other than X? This, uh, this intersection might be a little confusing. Another way to say this is, the epsilon of x contains some point of A other than x, right? If I say V epsilon intersect A contains some point, that means that V epsilon must share points with A, right? So this, this is the same thing. Anyway, this example. The blue is a neighborhood around one. Is it true that every neighborhood around one contains points of A? Is that true? No. I think this neighborhood that I drew, does it contain points of A? I think it does, right? In this case, my set A is zero to one. All right, and this neighborhood here, it does overlap with the set A a little bit. And, uh, would you agree every neighborhood here must overlap a little bit with the set A? I think it does. So in this case, the answer is yes. This is because every neighborhood of one includes some points of A. Right? Every neighborhood, no matter how small, it will overlap the set A, which means that one is a limit point. Somebody tell me another limit point for this set? Zero, yeah, for the same reason. Any neighborhood around zero does intersect with the set. So also 
zero is a limit point. Any others? Actually, there are others. Maybe a, it's not really a trick question, but yeah. Yeah, actually, all the other points inside A, they too are limit points. Because certainly, if you just choose some point in the middle, it is also true that every neighborhood around that point intersects the set A. So I'll say, you know, also one half, etc. right? So actually, for this set A, so for A equals the open interval 0 to 1, the set of all limit points is the closed interval 0 to 1, right? Everything in that set to begin with is a limit point, and also the two endpoints, which are not in the set, they're still limit points, all right? And this is generally true. This is not, not special about 0 to 1. Sorry about that. Change my, this guy. Nothing special about 0 to 1. It's any open interval its set of limit points is equal to the closed interval of the same endpoints. All right, how about another interesting example? Let's try, so how about this? One over n, one of my favorite examples. So this one has just a bunch of individual points. Let's say here's zero and here's one. The points are here, and then a half, and then a third, and then a fourth, and so on, right? You know this example. I would like to know about the limit points here. So, for example, let's ask again about one. Is one a limit point? Remember what that means? That every interval around that point must intersect the set Here's one where it actually matters that this business about, it says, sorry, let me scroll up to the uh, definition. All the neighborhood contains some point of A other than X itself. So down here, you have to look, looking at this point one, does every neighborhood of one intersect the set A at some point other than one itself? The answer is no. Like this little neighborhood that I drew, any neighborhood with radius, you know, one half or less, will not intersect A at a point other than one itself. So the answer here is no, 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 uh, because uh, small neighborhoods of one contain no points of A other than one itself, but that doesn't count in the definition. This, by the way, is why uh, the point itself is not allowed to count. If the point itself counted as part of these intersections, then every point automatically would always be a limit point, which is, which is not an interesting definition. All right. So one is not a limit point. What about, um, what about one half, which is in the middle right here? What would you say? Is that a limit point or not? One half right here. You should imagine. Uh, I think the answer is no, it is not. You can find another little neighborhood around this point which excludes all the other points, right? Which does not intersect the set A at all, okay? Sounds to me like actually none of these will be. I mean, they get pretty close together, but you could always find little neighborhoods to separate them all, right? So in this example, no points of A, whoa, sorry. I tapped the A because I was about to say the word A. Um, no points of A are limit points. Right? Are there any limit points at all? I mean, sometimes you can have limit points that are not in the original set, like we saw with the open interval had some endpoints. Are there any limit points here? Yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I think zero is a limit point. You should ask yourself, if I take any small neighborhood around zero, will this neighborhood automatically contain some of the points from A? And the answer is yes, it will. It contains, in fact, infinitely many of the points. 
on, on the right side of that neighborhood, nothing on the left side. So zero is a limit point. That's because any neighborhood around zero does contain a number of the form one over n. How do you know that's true? That's actually something we talked about a long time ago. Is one over n infinite Yes, that's true. I was looking for a big word. There's sort of a, there's actually a name for that. The fact that um, any, yeah? Well, yeah, it converges to zero, that's true. I was looking for... Yeah, zero is the inf. You're all saying great things that I'm unenthusiastic about because you're not saying what I wanted you to say. Anybody remember? There's, there's, a, there's a term for the fact that um, the numbers one over n get arbitrary close to zero. I'm thinking of the Archimedean property, the small version. This is about how, what the, the numbers one over n look like. All right, everybody remembers the Archimedean property, I hope. Um, zero is a limit point anyway that's all I'm saying so in this case the set of all limit points consists only of zero right this is a uh, set with only one limit point okay I got just a couple more examples more simple examples how about this this is a little different one two three so I can draw this one fully here are the points They're supposed to be evenly spaced. Give me a break, I'm having trouble breathing. Um, what do you think? Are there any limit points? I guess you only have three choices, so you could just check each one of them. How about number one on the left? Is that a limit point? You should imagine, you should ask yourself, can I put a neighborhood around it? Um, or does every neighborhood around this intersect some of the other points? The answer is no. So one is not a limit point and neither is two or three for the same reason. So this set has no limit points. That is possible. Maybe they're so spread out because of your head. <laughs> yeah, maybe. There's so many reasons. There's so many possibilities. Although I recently got a negative COVID test, so it's not because of that. Congratulations to me. I was chosen for testing Tuesday this week. All right, this one has no limit points. In fact, it's not so hard to show that any finite set automatically has no limit points. Because if there's only finitely many points, they have to be separated from each other. And so you can always find some little neighborhoods in between them. All right, how about two more examples? This one's a little more exotic. A equals Q, all right? so the. You can't really draw a picture of that, but I'll just sort of draw this kind of squiggly thing. The, the, um, the points of Q, of course, they sort of lie uh, evenly dispersed everywhere inside the real numbers. Uh, maybe just to get us going, let's, let's just consider the number zero. Is zero a limit point? There, of course, there's nothing really special about zero in this example, but just so we have somewhere to start. Is zero a limit point? You have to imagine if I put a little neighborhood around it, does that neighborhood automatically intersect some other of the rational numbers? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Any other answers? I think it, I think it does. Because isn't there an irrational number between zero and the next rational number? So you could have the, the neighborhood be the size of that irrational number. Uh, n no, it is true that uh, there is, yeah, there is a ra uh, irrational between any two rationals. That's true. But uh, if you take this neighborhood, say it has radius epsilon, it is also true that there's a rational in between zero and this epsilon whatever the epsilon is, right? Like one over n, there's some really, really big n so that one over n will be uh, between zero and any radius that you can think of. So uh, actually it is true that this neighborhood here must include other rationals. That's because the rationals really squeeze up right next to the zero, right? There is no 
there's no gap between zero and the next uh, and the first smallest rational because there's no smallest rational again because of the Archimedean property so here actually zero is a limit point because you can't separate zero from the other rationals with a little neighborhood around it all right and nothing is special about zero in that in that case actually any of the rationals have the same uh, the same property put a neighborhood around any of the rationals, it will automatically include some other rationals because the rationals are everywhere, all right? Um, what about the irrationals? What if I considered, say, pi over here? Is that one also uh, a limit point? You have to wonder, if I put a little neighborhood around pi, does this neighborhood necessarily include some rational numbers? And the answer is yes. This is because of the... Uh, well, we know from the density property of the rational numbers, that was the theorem that we, we had. It says that uh, the rationals are everywhere. So, in, you know, whatever this number is, the right end point of this interval is gonna be pi plus epsilon, and there automatically will be a rational between pi and pi plus epsilon. So, um, also pi is a limit point. In fact, every real number is a limit point of this set. All right, so um, any real number is a limit point of Q. All right, because the Qs, them Qs are everywhere. Any questions about that? Okay, one more example. This one maybe is the easiest of all. What if A is all of R? Just everything. Um, what, uh, what can you say about the limit points of that set? Every real yeah, every real number is a limit point um, for, I would say, more obvious reasons. Certainly it's true, no matter what number you start with, if you put a neighborhood around it, it automatically includes other numbers. I mean, it sure does. So in this case, Again, any real number is a limit point of R. All right. Here ends my many examples about limit points. I hope you're getting to have some kind of intuition about the set of limit points. Um, just for your information, this, what our book refers to as limit point, has a few other names if you read other books or something, um, is also called... Uh, sometimes these are called cluster points. Limit point is also called, I should keep the cluster point or accumulation point. Um, the idea behind those words, I think these are all good words actually. Cluster point or accumulation point might make you consider, say, this example here, where zero is called an accumulation point, and you can sort of see why that word is used. The reason zero is a limit point here is because these other points, they kind of accumulate near zero, or they kind of cluster near zero, all right? The reason the word limit is used is because these points make a sequence whose limit is zero. So this is why they're called limit points also. And that actually is a theorem that I'm gonna say about limit points. This is why you should call them limit points is because limit points are points which are the limit of some other points from the set A. So here's the theorem. It says X is a limit point of my set A if and only if there exists a sequence a n each being elements of a with a n not equal x for all n and a n converges to x so this is the reason why the word limit point is used because a limit point is one for which can find a sequence in the set whose limit is that point, all right? So 
again, in, this, in the case of this example, 1 over n, you should be thinking of these points. And the fact that these red points are, make a sequence that converges to something, it means that something, whatever they converge to, will be a limit point. That's why the word limit point is used. Um, this is a if and only if I want to try and give us, um, we're not going to do a super in, uh, detailed proof of this, but I want to try and give us a, an idea of why this is true. Mostly I'm going to just draw some pictures. Um, why is the definition that we said before the same as uh, the existence of some kind of sequence which has a limit, uh, which has that point as its limit? Let's look at this direction first. So for this direction, I'm going to say let x be a limit point. And I would like to demonstrate that there is a sequence of points which approach x, all right? So um, can we find a sequence in A approaching X. Uh, the answer is yes, we can. But uh, the picture that I would like to draw is something like, you know, here's X, right? And um, the definition that we've been using of limit point is that every neighborhood around X contains some points of A other than X itself, okay? So we can actually use that to create a sequence of points which converge to X. And the idea is every neighborhood, so I can choose, let's choose epsilon equals one and then a half and then a third and then a fourth Etc. This gives me a bunch of neighborhoods. This is V1 of X, and then I can have V a half of X, and then I can have V a third of X. I'm choosing increasingly small neighborhoods, and because X is a limit point, it means every one of those neighborhoods must contain a point of A other than X itself. All right? So, Every one of these neighborhoods, you can find a point in them. They don't all have to be on the same side, but. And you can do this forever, right? That's what it means that X is a limit point. It means no matter what neighborhood you choose, you can choose increasingly smaller neighborhoods, and every one of those neighborhoods must contain a point of A other than X itself. Uh, but those points, make a sequence which converges to x, don't they? Choose them one at a time. So, you know, to write the, the official details of the proof, you would say let a sub n be a point of v 1 over n of x, right? I'm using the epsilon neighborhood whose radius is 1 over n each time. First the radius is 1, and then a half, and then a third intersect A, right? You choose a point in A, which is also in each of those neighborhoods. And then this sequence, AN, because here's some details I'm leaving out, but because of the way you built those neighborhoods, they shrink down to, to nothing. Those points must converge to X. And that's what we wanted, right? The whole, the whole deal was let X be a limit point, and then you have to find a sequence that uh, converges to X, and this is how you do it. You make smaller and smaller neighborhoods. Each of those gives you a point each, and then those points converge to x. All right. So this is one direction of the of the justification. Remember, what we're demonstrating is the limit point. The definition in terms of neighborhoods is the same as um, there, the existence of a sequence whose limit is x. That's why it's called limit points. Let's try the other one now. So this way would say I assume I have a sequence a n. Is a sequence in A with A n approaching x. Does this necessarily mean that any neighborhood around x contains some points of A? So the picture you should have in mind is, let's say maybe uh, x is, I'll make x the black point, 
and then there is a sequence from A which approaches X. Right? This is what our picture must look like. Is it true that every neighborhood around X includes some points of A, which are the red points? I think that, that must be true. If these points on the sequence are in A, then every neighborhood of X. This is just the, the, the topological definition of convergence. It would say that these points converge to X. It means beyond a certain point, all of those points are in any neighborhood, right? So every neighborhood of X will contain actually infinitely many terms of that sequence. It doesn't have, to, for our purposes, I'll just say will contain terms of the sequence. Which means any neighborhood will contain points of A, because the sequence is in A. other than X itself. All right, so this is just, this. I think this direction of the proof is a little easier than the, than the first one. Because those points converge to X, what, what that means, convergence in terms of neighborhoods, means that any neighborhood around X must contain actually infinitely many of those points. All right, so this is the justification for the language, uh, the, the term limit point for these things. They are just the points which are equal to the limits of sequences from the set A. All right? Any questions about that or thoughts? I hope your major question is, OK, what about closed sets? That's what this whole thing, this whole discussion of limit points is really just to warm us up to the idea of a closed set. Now that we're all uh, good with the idea of a limit point, here's the definition that we've all been waiting for of a closed set. So in our book, they use the, the letter big F for a closed set. I'm not sure why. Um, a set F, maybe in French, the word for closed starts with F. It does. I don't know why that matters. A set F is closed if F contains every limit point. of F, all right? It does contain all the limit points, or all the accumulation points, all the cluster points. Remember, open set means it, uh, it includes none of its boundary points. When I was saying boundary all that time, I said it, I was being kind of vague. Really, what I meant by boundary was these limit points, the accumulation points. Open means it contains none of them. Closed means it contains all of them. All right, that's the basic idea, yeah. R is closed, yes. R is also open, interestingly enough. But um, yeah, what did I just say? Contains, uh, open set does not mean it contains none of the uh, accumulation points. It means that every point is an interior point. Every point has a neighborhood around it. Um, I shouldn't have said it that way. But yeah, it's true, R. So actually, I wanted to revisit all those examples that we just did. Set, can we just say, which uh, are they closed or not? So R is closed because R does include all of its limit points. Remember the set of all limit points of R was R. And R contains all the points in R. Okay, what about uh, Q? Is Q closed? Your, uh, the question is, does Q contain all of the limit points of Q? The set of limit points of uh, Q is, do you remember? It was all of R, right? Every real number is limit point. And so does Q contain all of the limit points? It does not, right? Q, Q does not contain every point of R, even though uh, the, the R is the set of limit points. So Q is not closed. Another way you could think of this is in terms of limits of sequences. Remember, a limit point means that um, it is the limit 
of a sequence in Q or, or in A. A close, something you can say about a closed set is if you have a sequence of points in your closed sets, its limit must also be in the set that you're talking about. But that's not true of, of points in Q. It's not true that if you have a sequence of rational numbers, it's possible for them to uh, um, converge to an irrational. Uh, so Q is not closed. What about some of those other examples? How about the open interval from zero to one? Is that closed? I mean, everybody knows the open interval is not closed. Uh, it's true, it's not closed. Why not? Can you say why? Yeah, because it doesn't contain zero and one, which were its limit points. Those, those were some of its limit points. Since it doesn't contain zero, and one, which are limit points. All right, and for basically the same reason, the closed interval zero to one, it is closed because it does include those two points and also all the points in between. This one is closed because its set of limit points is the closed interval zero to one and it contains all those points. So that one is closed. What about this one? One over n, where n is a natural number. Close or not? Nah? Open? <laughs> it's actually not open. It's not open. Um, so it can't be closed. What do you think? That's right. Uh, remember when we did this example uh, a few moments ago? Zero is one of the limit points. In fact, zero is the only limit point of this set, uh, which is not part of the set. So this is not closed. And it's because zero is a limit point. But not in the set. Uh, here's something cute. Actually, it is a true fact that uh, any set which is not closed you can always add stuff to it to make it closed. You know, the reason, if you have a set that's not closed, the reason it's not closed is because some of the limit points are not in there. If you just throw those points in, then it will become closed. So um, if you do that to this example, what you get is this set, union the number zero. If you add in zero, now it becomes closed because now it does include all the limit points. You know, the reason it wasn't closed is because it it wasn't including zero. But since I put that in there, this one is closed. There's actually a name for that. Uh, that's called the closure. If you have a set which isn't closed, but you decide to throw in all the uh, limit points, it makes the set a little bit bigger, typically. And that's called the closure of the original set. Well, we're going to talk about that, but not. Uh, I'll say it again when we get to it again. Um, Oh yeah, one, one last example. I think I've, I've restated all the examples that we talked about before. This one's a little tricky maybe, a little strange. One, two, three, do you remember what is the, um, which, what are the limit points of this set? There are no limit points of this set. So is this one closed? Remember the definition of closed means it contains every limit point of, uh, of itself. There are no limit points. Would you say this set contains all of the limit points? The answer is yes, it does. This is, this is a sort of weird logical fluke, which we call uh, something being true vacuously, vacuous truth. This is closed. There are no limit points. And so the set contains all of the limit points. It's just there aren't any. This is a, a weird property about just the way that we speak about the empty set, but since the set of limit points is empty, it is automatically true that this thing contains all the limit points. This is like when I say um, all my x wives are models. This is true because I have no x wives, right? 
And many things are true. All my ex-husbands are models also. I have neither. All right. I think we revisit all those examples. Any questions about any of those? I hope you have some idea of what closed means. I will have you note, I, I think somebody already indicated this, R is open and closed, right? Last time we said that R was uh, open, and this time we said that R is closed, so remember the silly word for that is clopen. None of these other sets that we talked about are clopen. You might wonder if it's possible. Maybe R is only clopen. I mean, it's the only one we've talked about, but it's something to think about. Um, can I just say another way you could define closed sets? So equivalently, Um, I define close means that it contains all of its limit points, but remember limit points you can express in terms of sequences. They are the limits of sequences from the original set. So another way you could say what closed means, F is closed when for any sequence A, N, and F, if you take any sequence of points in your set with a n converges to some limit a, then the point that it converges to is in f. This is another equivalent um, idea of what it means to be a closed set. It contains all of its limit points, which means if you have some sequence which approaches some limit, that limit must also be in the set. All right, this is another way of thinking. And in fact, this is, in my mind, I find this easier to, to think about. If you ask me just to, uh, to explain, if, if I only have you know, 10 seconds to explain to you what a closed set is, this is probably how I would say it, because when I think of a closed set in my own, in my own heart, this is kind of how I think of a closed set. All right. Uh, oh yes, I was. I, I knew I had one more thing to say that'll only take me about thirty seconds to say. This is perhaps the reason why this is called closed. I don't know if you ever wondered why is an open interval called open and a closed interval called closed. By the way, I asked my twelve-year-old yesterday if she knew what an open interval and a closed interval is. She did not. Um, she assured me, she said, well, probably, probably I do, but they call it something different in my school, which I'm pretty sure they don't, because I've never heard anybody say anything other than open and closed interval. I don't know if you ever wonder, though, why, why the words open and close? Um, one reason, this is maybe an unsatisfying, um, an unsatisfying reason, but what this means is a closed set In mathematics, the word closed, we use this phrase like closed under, like in algebra, you say it like a group or whatever is closed under multiplication or in linear algebra, you know, it's a vector space closed under addition and scalar multiplication it means if you, you know, you say a vector space is closed under addition, it means if you add two things in there, the answer is also in there, right? This is what mathematicians, that idea is what we use the word closed for. Although I don't know why we use the word closed for that, but anyway, a closed set is, in the same sense, closed under um, taking limits of sequences. Like this thing that I just put in the bracket, what it means is, if you have a closed set, it means if you have a sequence of points in your set, the limit is also in the set, all right? So this, in that sense, it's, it's a similar usage of the word closed. Like in a group, if you have two things in the group, their product is also in the group. In a closed set, if you have a sequence of points and it converges, then its limit is also in the set. That's what closed means. All right, I think that'll do it for now. I hope you all have a great weekend. We will have a homework assignment for next week and, uh, and a test on Friday. See you then.